continuing from my previous video. We'll look at how to connect our local container to the outside world. Let me explain what I mean. Right now, we have programs running on our local computer, in this case, NA and so on. Grant Llama, Posrits, and everything else you've added or removed there. But that's not the main point here. So localhost, NA, and so on. It can send requests to some services for hours, but it can't receive any. In other words, if some service tries to reach out to our net NA, it won't succeed. In this case, I'd like to talk, for example, about a Telegram bot. So if you can send something to Telegram, like a message from your local network, that's fine. But getting something back is another story. Telegram can't send you anything. And the bots that work in Telegram operate over HTTPS. But locally we only have HTTP, not HTTPS. The same goes for Gmail. So anything that can be sent to our backend, like certain events, just won't work out of the box because our computer is protected from external, let's say, intrusions into our system. Otherwise, every computer connected to the internet could be easily hacked. That's why it's isolated. And here in this video, I'd like to talk about how to actually set things up so that any 10 can receive certain events or notifications from Gmail or any other service. So here, we'll look at how to set up Cloudflare, a service that will interact with our locally running any 10. This will happen through it. In other words, Telegram won't send directly, but through the Cloudflare service, and then Cloudflare will work with ours which is running locally. If you're interested, watch the video till the end. We'll discuss in detail how to set this up. So of course, you need to register on Cloudflare. Otherwise, you won't be able to use the platform. After registering, you have a choice. Either purchase a domain. We definitely need a public domain to set this up. Or you can also do a transfer. Other providers, like Grok, offer public, free domains, but those are temporary. But we need a permanent one, because if you don't want to keep reconfiguring things all the time, let's register a new domain for our needs. And great, it's available. Why is it only this price? But if it's N and TNC, for some reason it's considered premium. Does it depend on the name? Apparently, if the name is short, then it's considered premium. Well, what if it's N and so on? That's already cheaper, not as much, and here N is five characters. Apparently, she already thinks so. Well, let's do it for testing purposes. I'll finish the purchase now and come back. So, moving on, now you have a domain in Zero Trust. Here, select Zero Trust. We're interested in network tunnels, and then add a tunnel. Then we click on Cloudflare, and here, tunnel name, and you can name it safe. So, here we're prompted to choose an environment. I have a Mac, so I select Mac. And here we need to select copy the command and run it in our terminal to set it up on your end. As for the Cloudflare program, I'll set it up properly on my end later. There's a secret key here, so I'll do this without screen recording. So after successfully running the command, it was installed. And we can see that now there's a message here showing the connector ID and the status as connected. All right, now we need to choose a domain. And for the path prefix, think it over. I'm not sure if we need it or not, for now we don't. Okay, the optional pack isn't needed either. Here, we need to select HTTP. 
and for localhost, it shows whichever one we want here. So redirected localhost is running on five, six, seven, eight. Let's refresh. Yes, that's our running instance, the one from the previous video. Now here, we can set it to five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's save everything. Now we can go to RNN. So notice it's no longer localhost party. Let's check that we're really seeing our local version here. To check, it's pretty simple. Just log in. Almost forgot the password. Logged in. And now let me switch to the local version. Watch this. I'll create a test question here. A uh, workflow, something like that. I'll save it. And now if we go here, we see two workflows, but here there's only one. I refresh the page. Yes, this is our local version. Congratulations, you now know how to work with it, but that's not all. So the most important thing here, which many people miss, is that if we go and, for example, want to connect some webhook. For example, notice what the endpoint is here. That is, the URL is localhost 5678 and HTTP. Integration with such a URL won't work for Telegram, Gmail, because you need to set up a redirect there, and it has to be on HTTPS. So how can we fix this? It's very important to know this. We go to our Docker desktop, find our container, open it, go into the configuration, and open it in the code editor. Then we find the environment variable for the n and tent service. Here they are. We need to add the QRL variable. That is to say, it absolutely shouldn't just be located here. It truly needs to be HTTPS and our complete URL should be present here. So you really have to be quite careful with this particular part. Next, just like before, and one more thing. And then protocol HTTP. That's it. We have successfully made our modifications and now we need to carefully save these important changes. For these crucial adjustments to properly take effect and be fully implemented within our system, it is absolutely essential that we proceed to restart our container, ensuring everything is refreshed and updated correctly. To restart, we need to go to the terminal and open our project. And here there are two commands that will help us. Docker compose down. It removes the containers and then Docker compose up. We do this and with the new containers, it will load ours on this instance with the new environment variables. Let's take a look. Right now it's starting up. Let's wait for it, and let's check that everything is running in our Docker container. We can see that all the services, like Mackey, Grant, Padres, and Intent are running. Now let's go back, refresh the page, and check the output. And there you go. Now you have HTTPS and Vipuck installed here. Let's check right away to see if it's working, both for SYN and DN. I just opened the start section in a new tab, and here you get all the information about the incoming request. So this is a very important point for integrating with certain services, like Telegram, Gmail, and any others that require HTTPS and a public endpoint. By the way, 
Keep in mind that if you stop the container and don't start it back up, yes, it won't work. Or if you click stop here, for example, on the container, then all containers based on 100 will stop. Your service. It won't be accessible either via the public domain or locally because it's installed there. You need to start it again and then it will work. In this video, you learned how to connect your locally running NN instance. With a bunch of services that we set up in the previous video. If you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. There we cover public services like Telegram and Gmail, which require you to have HTTPS and which send you webhooks. Before, if you had a local instance, it was hard to receive them because you had local hosts. But now you know how to do it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and check out the link in the description. I'm creating a course on NNT, so leave an application, and I'll also include a survey. Please take it, because the rest of the course structure will depend on your feedback. That's it for the course. Thanks for watching the video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.